What is up, everybody? Uh, welcome to the podcast, Joe Legretti. How you doing, man? I'm doing good, man. Thanks for having me. Good. Mm. Is it Joe or Joey or Joseph? It's Joe. Yeah, Joe. I mean, it's Joseph, but everybody calls me Joe my entire life. Yeah, yeah, So yeah. it's Joe. No, I, I asked that because like, people just like randomly start calling me Pat. Mm-hmm. And uh, if I don't like the person, yeah. I hate when they call me Pat. <laughs> but no, if I like I'm like, yeah, friends, my friends could call me Pat. Right. But uh, don't don't just jump off and like just go like, oh, what's up, Pat? Yeah. Like, yeah. No, man. Like... <laughs> Like, let's be friends first before you go there. So, like, I just want to, because I know that you know, social media you have, uh, Joseph. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man, I've been calling him Joe this whole time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. I think I've recently changed that, too. It's like, but I know what you mean when you're like, I don't know you, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, nah, cool, man. Thanks for coming by, uh, doing this uh, doing this episode, doing the podcast. Uh, before we get into it, though, let's uh, start with your social media websites, uh, any shows you got coming up. Chad, I wish I had a website. Not yet. Yeah. I'm not there yet, but uh, I do. I'm on uh, Instagram primarily. Uh, that's at Joe Leg underscore SD, J O E L E G underscore SD, uh, San Diego. That's where I'm from. Uh, you know, Facebook, Joe Legretti. And uh, yeah, that's where you can find me there. And then uh, you said shows now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What yeah, shows yeah, you got coming up? Yeah, so I'm doing uh, actually tomorrow or uh, October 17th, Thursday, I'll be at uh, LOL doing a showcase, doing 15 minutes there. Uh, Saturday, I'll be up in Austin at uh, Lazy Days. And then Halloween, me and the uh, me and the homies from the Loud Pack are going to be doing a show there. So, yeah. guys, got some good shows coming up, man. That's right, man. You remember the Loud Pack? Man. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's kind of uh, it's fun, man. It's a group of fun guys, man. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, that's cool, man. Uh, so you had a busy week this week, right? Like you, we had, we did a show together this past Saturday yeah. at Jokesters yep. for uh, Jeremy Brown. Jeremy Brown had a birthday showcase type type thing and yeah. stuff. And you've just been fucking busy since then, right? Like, yeah, yeah, man. What else did you do this week? Uh, so yeah, we did that show where you killed it. Shout out to you, bro. That oh, was thanks, that man. was literally from the time I've started up till now. That was literally one of the funnest shows I've been a part of. Yeah, and I that was literally like you killed it. That was the best I've seen you do, bro. Man, that crowd was hot, man. They were. That was a fun crowd. Like, man. shout out to Jeremy, Jer- Jeremy, man. Like, those were all his people. Yeah, those were all his people. Uh, which was great, man, because I I couldn't get people to show up to my show, yeah. you know. But uh, the whole the place was fucking packed. They were with it from the start. Uh, it was it was a fun time, man. That was a great room. That was. They, they I had a, I went into that show actually, with uh, he had some friends there and some coworkers there, yeah. and I had I have a joke where I talk about not wanting to be friends with my coworkers at For all. Sure, and man. He, I was like, I, I think I'm gonna x that out, and he was like, that'd be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, that might be a good idea. I was like, all right, all right, bro. Uh, but no, man. So yeah, we did that show. That was a lot of fun. Uh, and then I did Silver Spoon up in uh, New Braunfels just last night, mm-hmm. uh, and that was really cool. Cool, man that's uh i didn't even know it's like a ski resort or something like that and oh yeah it's like a bar and grill but they have like a ski resort and uh it's it's like this really cool setting bro it's like um they have like couches like it's not even chairs it's like a it almost looks like there's gonna be a play there mm-hmm. you know and then there's like sofas and recliners and that's where the audience sits and uh, i was talking to one of my buddies and i guess he did the show like a week or two before mm-hmm. you know and uh he was like, oh, yeah, man, like there wasn't a lot of people there. And so we had like 10 people there last night. And I was like, this shit is packed out, bro. Oh, We're yeah. going to kill it tonight. You know what I mean? So it's like a coffee house. It's uh, it's a restaurant. Oh, okay. like the, the Silver Spoon, it's a restaurant. And uh, they got like craft beer and stuff there. The staff was really nice to us. You know yeah. what I'm saying, man? They took care of us. But it was fun, man. You know, getting up on stage anytime is fun. Uh, but yeah, so I did that last night and then, uh, I was with, uh, Drew Blues and, uh, mm-hmm. we went up to, um, uh, some coffee house and uh, wake the dead and like Sam Marcus did a mic there, man. So oh, yeah. just getting after it, bro. Having fun with it. So that's cool. And then you got the showcase tomorrow at LOL. Mm-hmm. That's going to be tomorrow. Man. That's crazy, man. So you've been pretty busy, right? Like, yeah. How long have you been doing comedy? Uh, I just came up on a year. Oh, just yeah. Just came up on a year and uh, te- I guess technically I've been doing it like 10 months cause there was, uh, I went home for the holidays mm-hmm. and, uh, I had taken like a break. I wasn't doing any mics out there, but from the time I started to now, I'm just coming up on a year. Yeah. Yeah, man. How tough was it to take that break and then get back into it? It was tough, man. It right? was tough because I went home and, uh, some family stuff happened. My grandpa got like really sick, ended mm-hmm. up in ICU and, you know, thank God he came out all right. Uh, but I, I was kind of, uh, 
I was checking it out, you know what I mean? I was like, man, I, I like, I don't know if I'm ready to go hit these mics out here instead of just focusing on like trying to get better. Mm -hmm. And then when I came back, man, I was just like, dude, uh, I was like every day I had to try and like work up the courage to go. And then me and my girlfriend, Veronica, we went out to uh, Zushi Sushi. Mm -hmm. And this was probably after about a month of being back from California. And we're at the sushi restaurant and to my left is none other than a uh, local comic, Brendan Potter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was like, bro, you're fucking here right now at this dinner, man. <laughs> dude, I'm taking this as a sign. I'm fucking going back to stand up, dude. I was like, I'm going to go. And then literally after that, I went back to LOL that next week to the yeah. open mic. And ever since then, man, I, I haven't stopped and it's been going really well, man. Yeah. Yeah. So you got picked up by the loud pack. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, man, it, things have been going really well. I'm uh, I'm really enjoying it. That's cool, man. Uh, and so you're doing 15 minutes tomorrow that showcase? Yeah, that's gonna be 15. Oh, that's crazy. And yeah. like we were talking about about that before. Like you said, you you got like 30 minutes, or you could do like 30 minutes if you had to. I, I could if I had to, but that's I mean, you know, that's me being generous. You know, that's me yeah. being nice to myself. Um, if I had to do the tightest set possible, straight material, I'd do a solid 15. Yeah. But if I can, you know, kind of, you know, talk a little bit slower, do, you know, a little bit more storytelling, then I could go longer. But uh, I like a good, t like, tight 15, 20 right yeah. now, you know. Man, I haven't really figured out, like, I'm bad at, at uh, timing my, mm -hmm. my sets and stuff. Like, the set I had on Saturday uh, it was just 10 minutes. And I wound up going over and like actually like cutting two of the jokes that I wanted to close with, so I didn't really close as strong because I ran out of time. You know, right. I got I got lit. I didn't want to run the light, uh, but I, I just I don't know how to like time. Like okay, this bit is two minutes. This bit's three minutes. Like I need to to work on that. Like do you like do you have a system like that where you know like this is like this is exactly my fifteen minutes or this is my twenty minutes. Uh, so I guess somewhat, yeah. Like if they say, Hey, or if I know going into a show, I have to do 10, 15, whatever it is going to be. Mm -hmm. I always, I always have a set list ready to go and then I'll rehearse that before I hit the stage, yeah. you know? And then I'm kind of say, okay, I'm right here. You know, if I'm going to do a 15 minute set and then I go, okay, well I'm right. I'm at 12 minutes right now. So mm -hmm. let me try and figure out, you know, throw some more material in there, maybe do a little bit more crowd work, something like that. But, uh, my system is just really timing my set before i get to the show really that's how i go about it yeah and how do you how do you write are you like pen to paper write everything down are you just bullet points like how do you what is your process in writing and before your show my my process are you saying in terms of just getting material together or or before the show specifically not just before the show but like just working on on, on stuff like how what is your like your writing process yeah so what i like to do is like when i have an idea you know uh i like to free write about it, whatever, like, uh, I'm working on a new bit right now about like NASA, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I like to like free write a little bit and then kind of find what direction I want to go in. Then I kind of just start asking myself question, you know, what's funny about it? What do I remember? What's your personal, you know, point of view? Mm -hmm. And then I start trying to write jokes and then I take that to the stage really. Uh, but I'm trying to get a lot better, uh, with coming up with a system for how I write because yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I talked to some other comics, man, and they, Oh, I go up on stage and I riff or I, you know, I take an outline up there and I'm, that just, it doesn't work for me like that, man. I like to know what I'm going to say when I'm up on stage. Yeah. And then if I can ad lib or, you know, while I'm up there, the crowd's rocking with me with the joke and I can take it in a different angle or a different direction. Mm -hmm. Um, that's the only time I'm really comfortable like writing on stage, you know, but, mm -hmm. you know, um, but yeah, I'm very kind of thought out before I take material to the stage yeah and that's the thing with me too like uh like as far as like timing out my stuff because I if I have a bit that's usually four minutes mm -hmm. I could riff on it or if the crowd's not with me like I'll bail on it in two minutes yeah. you know what I mean so a four minute bit is not actually a four minute bit it could be less because if they're not with me on this I gotta fucking move on to something else right so it's kind of hard like I, I really don't I'm trying to to be loose with it, uh, but I, I I write a set list. I write a set list all the time and yeah. stuff. Um, and like, literally, it it just happened that my mom showed up to that show because I had talked to her <laughs> earlier and she's like, "Oh, I don't know, I don't think I'm gonna make it." I was right. like, "No, that's fine. You, you know, like it's it's cool. You know, you you had a busy day. You know, whatever." 
And then, so I write my set, and I go over it, and go over it, and then I show up, and then she's there with my sister. I was like, "Hey, what are you, what are you doing here? Like, you, you showed up, you know," which is cool. I mean, my family is very supportive and stuff. But then, right before it went on, I was like, "I'm not going to change anything. Like, the, the set is what it is. I'm sticking with it. I'm sticking, I'm she's st- either going to like it or she's yeah. not, man. I'm sticking with it, man, because like, I, I, I just can't." Uh, I mean, sometimes I'll throw stuff in there on, on the fly, like a, a different bit that yeah. I didn't have, like in there and stuff. If like some one thing leads to the other, right? But for that most part, I was just going like dot 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 um, by the list, and I was like, "All right, here, here we go." Yeah, <laughs> <but> see, <laughs> like, like when you throw that bit in there, though, right? Like, is it something that you already have written, or are you saying like it might just like the crowds like? they're agreeing like with like the material that you're putting out and then you're like, Oh, well I had this idea and it ties in perfectly with this and you're kind of riffing. Yeah. Or is it something that's like already written? No. Well, yeah. Like when I write the set, I write like, it's like a timeline. Like it's, it's every, every bit before leads you into the next bit type of thing or leads me into the next bit. So like, that's why that's how I piece it together. Like, cause most of my bits are like pretty short. So I try to build a storyline, not a storyline, but you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build like uh, a point, a, a connection point to, from eight, from each bit, you yeah. know, going from start to finish and all that stuff. Right. So, I mean, when I, once I started, I was like, well, this bit is going to happen, right. you know, regardless of who's in the audience or not, you know, <laughs> and it just so happened that they were with me on this and I was like, all right. Man. Yeah. And, uh, it was, it was awkward. It, yeah. was, it was awkward for sure. <laughs> but, uh, I don't, I don't think anything else would have fit my my set wouldn't have been as strong if i didn't have that one in there yeah you know that the crowd the crowd went off and then and then i could have said anything right. really once once that once that one hit yeah like they were with me on even stuff that like i i never did before right like they were they were with me they were a hot crowd man like give it give it up to them like they they, they earned you know the 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 fire behind my set. You know, yeah. or like they get credit for that. Not, yeah, and that wasn't just me. Yeah, yeah. You Dude, know, that shit was funny. <laughs> Cause man, like it, the crowd does make a difference. Like a lot of people, like they, if you have a bad set, like oh the crowd wasn't with me. But also, man, if they're with you, mm-hmm. like if they're a hundred percent like on board with you, yeah, like you got to give them credit too. Yeah, because they're 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 hyping you up. Yeah, you know, and then you'll find like. Uh, when you have that, when the crowds are with you all together, you know, just a hundred percent, they'll start laughing at parts of your material that you don't even intend on being funny, and you're <laughs> yeah. you're on stage and you're like, oh, like, and you're take the laughs, you know, but you're like, oh, this is a great crowd. I'm about to lay into these bitches. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I was re- I was recording it with uh, with the H six here, so the, the mics are very sensitive, mm. you know. So towards the end of the bit, when I talk about my uncle having a stroke, yeah, I hear people laughing in the back. I was like, bitch, that's not even the funny part. <laughs> like people were just laughing that I said, like, oh yeah, cause my uncle had a couple of strokes. Yeah. And like, <laughs> I was like, "Damn, dude!" He's so, like, "Let me get there." Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's true. Like, once you get them, and then like they think everything's a joke. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, maybe, maybe it's it's funny to them for some odd reason and stuff. But yeah, uh, they were they were definitely a hot crowd. Um. So yeah, man, that's cool. Uh. So this is this is weird. We kind of talked about it a little bit. You know, like this this might be the last. Baba Core Core podcast yeah, episode. Yeah, um, I'm honored. No. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. You ruined it. Uh, uh, I said, "Fuck it, I'm not doing this no more." Uh, but the whole f- the whole format, how I'm running things with with the actual podcast, I'm actually creating the network that's going to be called Baba Core Core, and moving it to uh, I guess starting a new kind of podcast type of thing. Yeah. Um, to which I I informed you about that idea, right? You know the the new podcast will be uh, renamed uh, X Lives, you know, because you you that was always my intention from the beginning. Yeah. When when I started about a cool core podcast was to get people's story. You know, I want to find out what they're doing now, what they're what they're up to, what they got coming up. But for for more more important than that, I want to know like, well, how did this all start? Like, where did this all come from? Right. So calling the podcast about a cool core. Um, it just, it didn't, it didn't give that away. You know, you really have nothing. You don't know what you're talking, what, what you're getting yourself into. A lot of people thought it was a food podcast, yeah. you know, so it would come like, oh, where's, where's the bubble cool at? Like, right. you know, like, and it wasn't that it was never intended to be like that, you know, all that stuff. So with wanting to start a network, uh, cause like with you, we were talking how 
you know, our, our first conversations that we had was like, mm-hmm. hey, man, you're doing this podcast. Right. How are you doing this? Because you yourself were interested in, in starting a podcast. Yeah. And you said that you, you're going to start it up, you know, probably in December. Yeah. Like December 1st. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you like talking to you, like a lot of people, that's like their, 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 their connecting connection to me, you know, like mm-hmm. they want to know like, okay, you have a podcast. I'm thinking about starting a podcast, you know, everybody's thinking about doing it. It's a great networking tool for sure. Right. So, um, stepping away from the actual Balakoa Core podcast, I figured let me, let me, let me start a different type of, uh, uh, podcast, you know, call it something completely different, mm-hmm. which is going to be called X lives. And then, um, because I, I really dig Baba Cool Core. I, I, yeah. that, that's a brand that I want to, that, that's me. Like, for sure, that's me. Right. So I'm going to create that or keep that and create like a podcast network to where I would uh, publish and host people's podcasts on my platforms. Um, and even even people that don't have the equipment or the, the know-how to record or produce their own podcast, I'll give that, uh, I'll do that, work with them with that as well. Yeah. So yeah, so welcome to the first episode of uh, of X Lives, man. This is it, baby. This yeah, yeah. Is, yeah man. So this thank you for cool. the, being the first guest on that. Thanks, man. And uh, so the whole point behind that, like I said, like for sure, we'll talk about your your your, your present. Yeah. Which is you getting getting being part of the loud pack, being like busy as fuck. Yeah. Doing comedy, which is great. Like within your first year, like that's, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. Um, you know your future plans. Yeah. But more importantly, what the what the purpose of these episodes is going to be like, find out, like, how did you all start? Like, how did you how did you get started in comedy yeah. and your life before comedy? Like, what 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 was Joe doing before he even thought about stepping up to the mic? Yeah, man. Well, dude, I came from uh, I don't know why I never thought to do stand up, but I, I was I come from an athletic background, man. You know, I grew up playing football, baseball. And as I got older, you know, and by, you know, high school, college, uh, it was football. Like yeah. that was really my focus, man. And, um, you know, I I was the kind of guy I was that dumb jock kind of guy, you know, where yeah. I had the talent to go division one, but I never had the grades. And so really I was going to be, I was supposed to go to Colorado state, like out of high school, man. And I was going to play, yeah, man. And I was going to play running back there. Uh, but again, you know, academics never worked out. Yeah. And, uh, so I went to a junior college in Northern California out there in uh, Modesto, went up there and, uh, I was only up there for a short amount of time some personal things happened, you know, Mm -hmm. had to cut that trip up there short and then I kind of just went down to San Diego, you know, went back down to San Diego and uh, started working, man. And I was working in restaurants and bars. And then I turned, you know, all of a sudden I'm 18, 19, 20. Now I'm 21 and I can drink and shit, man. And I was fucking around, dude. I was bar hopping, you know, just being a little fuck. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, partying hard all the time, dude. And uh, I was just like, damn, dude, like, what the fuck am I, what am I going to do? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Dog? Like. So I figured I was like in San Diego, living at home, just kind of, you know, being a wild child, not really focused on anything. And then I decided to move out here with my girl and uh, kind of get right. You know what I'm saying, man? Mm-hmm. And then uh, it was when I came out here that uh, I started to kind of refocus myself and figure out what it was I wanted to do. You mm-hmm. know, so. so your girlfriend's from here or you are both from San Diego? No, we're both from San Diego. So OK, so I was born in D.C. Uh huh. Uh, and then I moved to San Diego when I was real young. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, military? Uh, family military? Yeah, if my father's Air Force. Parents, oh, okay. parents split up, grew up with the mom's side of the family mm-hmm. out in San Diego. Uh, now my girlfriend, her dad is from San Antonio. Oh, okay. And then he joined the Marines, and then he ended up settling out there in San Diego, you know, got married to Veronica's mom, mm-hmm. right? And then, uh, so he stayed out there. So, yeah, we're both, essentially, though, we both did grow up in San Diego. We're both from there. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you just followed her family. Her family retired here. Her father retired here and came over here? No, no, no. No, he's still in San Diego. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, because she's in school right now. Oh, okay. Right? And so my thing was, like, when I when I first came out here, uh, she so she got her master's degree paid for by, like, the Hazelwood Act, or, like, a percentage of it's paid for. Yeah. Right? And so um, when I came out, dude, I was going to go back to school and all this stuff, and I was going to walk on at UTSA because mm. the dream was still to play football at that time. But I was just I, I'm getting older and older, and I'm like, man, I don't want to be 24, 25 trying to play college football, man. Like, I got to try and find something to do with the rest of my life. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But that's what brought us out here originally was school. You oh, know what I'm okay. saying? Yeah. 
And then that football dream is, I was just like, ah, dude, I'm getting old and shit. You know what I mean? But so it was just age, like age, like age, like got like kind of diminished your passion to like play football. I think it was, uh, or it was, was it the grades? <laughs> like you're like, it was, I, I mean, it was definitely, that definitely had something to do with it. You know, I mean, uh, I've just never really been academically inclined. I've always been athletically inclined. So I was going to SAC, right? San Antonio Community College. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, damn, dude, like, I'm going to have to be here for two years. I can't play football. God damn, like, what am I going to do? You know, and, and as that was kind of happening, I was just like, damn, dude, like, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, I just, I was losing the passion to want to play football mm-hmm. because of how much I hate school. <laughs> you know, oh, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying, man? And, 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 you know, but that's kind of to anybody. I mean, really where I fucked up was academically, you know what I'm saying? And I think a lot of people struggle like with trying to find something that they're interested in mm-hmm. once sports isn't an option. And that was my thing. Oh, football's not an option for a whole another two years. Well, fuck school. Mm-hmm. You know, that was like my mentality. And then I'm just like, well, fuck, that's not the way to go about it. You know what I'm saying? So I could be more disciplined in terms of getting back into school and focusing to get back on the field. Mm -hmm. But I'm also, by the time I would be able to physically be on the field eligible playing again, Mm -hmm. at this point, I would be 26 or 27 Mm -hmm. playing college football. And that's, I mean, maybe, you know, it it happens way more often than people think. I mean, it sounds old, but there's, I mean, there's guys who are 32 who are playing college football. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but that running was, back though. What's up? Running back. Yeah, yeah. yeah I played running back. Like in high, so in high school. No, but there's people like that are like 32 playing running back in college, college football. Oh no, no. But I mean, they're yeah, probably yeah. playing. You know, safety. I mean, I would say they're probably in the trenches somewhere. O line, D line, linebacker, maybe yeah. a safety in there. But like, so like when I was in that junior college, bro, uh-huh. uh, like the oldest guy on our team was like 34. Oh, dog, sure. yeah, yeah, from Stockton, California, you know, big motherfucker, dog, and I, he was just like, yeah, man, I'm here, bro, I'm trying to get to the league, and this and that, and that's everyone's fucking story at that point, you yeah. know, that's, and I'm just like, dude, I don't want to be one of these guys that's older, you know, trying to play college football to chase a, you know, a very low chance at getting into the league, man, you know what I mean, mm-hmm. and I was never a five-star recruit, you know, I was like a three-star guy, you mm-hmm. know, Mountain West schools, some Pac-12 schools, whatever, but I don't know, man, it just, it was just kind of fading away, and I was like, well, what can I do, what's something that I can get into, like, for the rest of my life, and I, I struggled to try and figure that out, you yeah. know what I'm saying? I mean, you, you focus on something for so long, like, that was your, that was the only, that was your main focus for school mm. was to play football. Yeah. So once football was gone, you're kind of like, well, why am I, why am I doing school? Yeah. And all that stuff, man. Yeah. So that was pretty rough. Uh, like, so what'd you try after football? Like, how'd you try to find something or how soon did you try to find something besides football? Dude, I was, uh, I was hating life, man. Like I was just kind of sitting in the house and, uh, I was like, dude, what the, you know, you watch these fucking motivational videos and you got to have a purpose and something to go for and do this and that. And it's just like, yeah. And I was just like, I just don't know what I want to do, you know? And it's like, well, okay, am I going to go back to school and try and, you know, become some kind of like sports analyst, you Mm -hmm. know, uh, business administration just to get into some kind of broad field of work. But this, I don't know, man, this, um, this like idea of just working like nine to five jobs, man. And it's never been my thing, you know, up until, and not saying like I can't keep a job, but it's like, oh, just the idea, like I want to work for myself. You know yeah. what I mean? That's ultimately like my goal is to be like an entrepreneur, just somebody who can virtually control his own schedule. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And, uh, but yeah, man, I was hating my life when I was trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And, uh, uh, I was watching stand up. Mm -hmm. You know, I was watching stand up for like literally two weeks. I wasn't watching TV shows. I wasn't watching movies. I wasn't watching sports, just stand up back to back. And it's that classic, you know, like I was just on the couch and one day I was just like, dude, why don't you, why don't you go try this? Mm -hmm. You know, I think I was, it was like a, I forgot who, I would think it might've been like Sebastian Maniscalco or like Mm -hmm. Tom Segura's like early, like special or something. Mm -hmm. And it was, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, dude, why don't you go fucking tell some jokes, you know, and see how that works. And then I kind of sat up like, 
Yeah, you know, and like that adrenaline kind of started going a little bit, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And it was that it was just like that light bulb moment, man. And I was like, "Well, this is I'm gonna go try this." Mm-hmm. And then I went down to um, LOL to check out their open mic for way too long. I, I went to LOL for like six weeks, literally before I even just to watch the show, just to watch. You oh know? wow! Yeah, and I just remember being like, <laughs> you know, it just not even knowing what stand up is, right? Mm-hmm. Arrogant. I'm just I'm funnier than that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, I could do it. Everybody this. does that, man. Dude, everybody. Everybody bro. does that. <laughs> and uh but yeah, so I went there and I was like, man, I I really think I can do this, man. And uh and then I ran into uh I was kind of checking in out when I would say, okay, this is going to be the day, it's going to be the day. And then one day I was shopping at Lock and Terra here in San Antonio and uh I ran into uh, another comic named Tanvir, Tam, you know, mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Tanvir Aurora and I ran into him at uh, at the Apple store and I was just like, dude, I've seen you at LOL like I really enjoyed your set, whatever. And I was like, you know what? I'm all about signs, man. You know, but I, I was like, dude, I give you my word. I was like, I'm going to just take the plunge next Tuesday. Mm-hmm. And me and him, we had like a cool conversation. And then that next Tuesday, I went and uh, he didn't even show up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, I'll be there, man. And then he wasn't <laughs> even there. But uh, but that next Tuesday, I had done it and uh, uh, or I did it. And, um, you know, it went OK. But uh and yeah, since then I, I I've been doing it, man. Other than like when I went home for the holidays or whatever. Yeah, but that's kind of that's kind of how I found it and got into it. I was bored, you know. Yeah. What, did Did you ever like have anything before that? Like were, like writing? Were you writing stuff? Were you like in, in theater? Like any type of performing arts before that? Yeah, dude. Well, so I was like a fucking uh, like I was like a knuckleheaded kid. Yeah, you know what I mean. Class and clown. And I was all that the, stuff. like, dude. I was the class. Like literally, I could show you my yearbook from middle school, and it's me and uh, one of my friends, Jade. Like we were the class clowns in middle school. You know what yeah. I mean? And so I was always kind of the silly, goofy, fun-loving kind of guy. You know, mm-hmm. um, but like I, I don't know, man. I remember. Uh, I think I don't know. I guess I. Uh, I never thought to do stand up or theater or anything improv. I mean, nothing like that, mm-hmm. man. But I look back on like my life, you know, and like there'd be times where we would, uh, there's this restaurant in San Diego, me and my family would always go to like every other week. It's called Felipe's. It's like an Italian place lying out the fucking door. You mm-hmm. know, it's a real popular place in little Italy. And, uh, dude, I would be like eight, nine, ten. And I'd just go up to people in line and be like, hey, can I tell you a joke? <laughs> yeah. And and then my grandma was the one who, like, reminded me of that story, you know. Yeah. And so outside of sports, dude, I never was like, oh, like, let me do theater. Or like, uh, you know, it was like sports. I might pick up the guitar. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was, dude, I was like a jock growing up. But as I look back on it, I'm just like, oh, like, oh I guess I've always kind of had an inclination to want to be performing. You yeah. know, and if it's theater, improv, stand up, whatever, you know, but I've always kind of have had that, you know. Yeah. Are you, are you the uh, the only kid? No, no, no. So <laughs> I have a I have an older sister and a younger sister. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of two, but we have different dads. Oh, yeah. So I grew up with my oldest sister in San Diego, Natalie. So, uh-huh. yeah. So did she have anything like that, any type of performance stuff that you would see her do? And like, oh, I want to do something like that. You know, that's a great question because she was a thespian. She, yeah. In high school, she did do a lot of plays. She was, um, uh, yeah, she did it in high school. And I would go to every single one of her shows. You know, she did The Wizard of Oz and, you know, a number of different things. But every time she would perform, I'd be there. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Maybe I, I never thought about it like that, dude. Like maybe that kind of planted something in my head, too. Like, oh, like this is also like a, a cool outlet for you. Like, you know, this could be something that you get into eventually, too. But yeah, I, I never sure. I never thought of it like that till you mentioned it. That's yeah, pretty cause, cool. Because you see people do that. You know, like I, I come from like a lot of people that do, do like performance arts or maybe even like just like productions in like theater and all that stuff and so it, it was always like around me you know people doing that type of stuff so I, I was inspired like very young in like any type of like theater arts or performance performing arts or anything like that so I kind of think like it has to come from somewhere like it just didn't start like when you said like oh I, I just so happen to watch Netflix I was like I could do that I mean I'm, I'm not saying that I'm sure people do that right they see a special and they're like oh let me do this now yeah yeah, yeah. but like it, it was always in in my life as far as like seeing people perform, seeing people write, seeing people uh, even behind the scenes. You know, I used to be behind the scenes. I, I worked with opera, yeah. done a lot of opera productions. And then 
performing in bands you know yeah. that's where i got the high to be on stage really? you know so it didn't just it just didn't just happen and a lot of people don't think about that like oh i was surrounded by it like i did have influences yeah. before netflix and all that stuff so that's what i just wanted to ask yeah man and on the other hand too why i asked you if you were like the only child because usually being the only child your imagination has to go like fucking crazy <laughs> you know yeah dude. i mean i was the, the only child i was the youngest boy so i was kind of like the only child yeah for, you know in, right. in a sense uh but I, I had older sisters and then cousins and all that stuff right but uh yeah, man, like everybody else, you, you would always catch on to other people's like imaginations and how they are creative. And you're like, I need to find something like that, too, like yeah. that I have. So I, that was why I was asking. About but the, but so, so you worked like, you're saying like you worked behind the scenes, like doing like set stuff or? or yeah, uh, I, was, I was a stagehand for a few productions and then I was an assistant stage manager. Okay. You know, for, for opera. Right, right. Which I never liked opera, never didn't know. It was, it was a job opportunity and stuff and I was in between work. Um, so I took that on and I fucking, I fucking loved it, man. Yeah. I love seeing how things are done, seeing how like behind the scenes, how things are made and all that stuff, right. you know, just being part of the production, you know, cause every, you go to a, you go to the theater and like, you just think it's so easy. Like everything just falls into place. Everybody knows their part. Like it just happens naturally right. and stuff doesn't man if you don't tell people when they need to be on stage if you don't have the props ready to go on stage like the the whole production would just fall it, yeah. apart so this is it i mean this is legit production that you're a part of yeah man. like the whole planning and all that stuff finding out where people need to go um so yeah what sucks about it though and it's not so much like that anymore like uh me and the wife just went to a production of uh fiddler on the roof uh-huh never seen it before heard all the musics but never never seen it before and stuff and but before when i would see a production i would just focus on side stage because yeah. i'm like okay now a set piece is coming in i know there's props that's coming in from that side somebody missed their mark uh, and all that so stuff. you kind of you can see what's going on while yeah. you're watching the couldn't show. enjoy anything yeah. <laughs> could could not enjoy your show right because right, I'm, right. I'm too busy looking i'm like oh that that's that look that looks wrong and i could see like the 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 gaff tape you know on the floor like oh somebody missed their mark and all that stuff right it would take me out of this until recently i just went to a production because it's been it's been a few years since i worked on any type of production like that uh but the last show i went to i was able to like just enjoy it be an audience member don't yeah. worry about anything else so it's great i mean i'm glad it's out of my system yeah i don't know if i would do it again you know because uh, it's a lot of stress, man. It sounds like it. it was a lot. I mean, you're sitting there watching a play, can't even enjoy it. You're like, God damn it, these people missing their marks over here, dude. Like, Yeah, man. Like the last one I did, I went up to Dallas uh, or Fort Worth to work on a, a production. It was a small production. Yeah. Not a lot of movements, no set pieces, nothing like that. Light cues and like you had like to tell people, okay, you, you go out through here, you get out through here, here's your props and all that stuff. Small production, but I was I was the stage manager. Yeah stressed the fuck out dude that that week i didn't sleep it was it was it was fucking rough yeah but so so like you talk about that um like that high from performing yeah right? so you got that through doing production assistant and yeah. managing right but so like what what's that high like it's it's pretty much like um i don't know man like seeing something from start to finish and knowing that it's done mm -hmm that's that's beautiful that's right. a beautiful feeling like no matter what it is you know like yeah you ever change a tire yeah okay, right like no, i mean not many but yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i mean something so like so so trivial like that like changing the tire right once you get the, the tire back on once you get it fixed and put it back up like you feel like i fucking did that mm -hmm. it's just changing tire everybody changes tires every day right but like just something like that like uh, it, it always make and i think that's why i start so many projects because I I need to see something from start to finish in order to feel good about myself. Yeah, you know, shit. I just I never thought about that either. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I I, I kind of I think that's a sickness. Yeah, it has to be a sickness. Like, why can't you just let things be? Like, why do you have to be performing or doing projects? Like, why? Like, I don't know, man. That's right. that's pretty scary. But yeah, like being being part of those productions. Especially when, like, because it would be, like, weeks of rehearsal yeah. and then three shows. And then once those shows are over with, you're like, I'm so happy this is over with. But that was fucking fun. Yeah. You know, it's not fun when when you're in it. But, like, when it, when it's over and everybody's happy and nobody knows the, any mistakes. The or stress is gone. Stress like, is gone. Yeah. You know, money's in the bank. <laughs> and you're just like, 
fuck yeah, dude. Right. Yeah, you're like, I did that. You just have that sense, like it's uh, yeah, it's rewarding, man. Yeah, it's really and, and, rewarding. And even just the sense of acknowledgement, like just like you would get like uh the uh, what is it called, like the program, mm-hmm. and it would see like stage manager or assistant stage manager, and my name was right there. I was like, oh shit, I'm something, you know? Yeah. At least for right now. Yeah, it's giving you that sense of pride, like, uh, and you feel involved too, right? Like, uh, yeah. There's that sense of community, and it's uh, that there, there is something really special about that, you know, where you're yeah. just involved and you're accomplishing things, dude. I know what you mean. That is and same thing. same thing with with athletics, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, being a being a running back in a football team, like yeah, you're one person, but it's a very it's a pivotal role. You know, you're making plays, you're doing, yeah. you're doing shit for your team. Right. Like all the, all this stuff is like, it's, it's, it's self, uh, not self-fulfilling, but like self, um, like you're, you're doing something for, for your own enjoyment, but you're doing something as a team, right. as a crew, you know, and, and you know, win or lose, you know, it's still like you're, you still did the best you could. You did your job. You were where you're supposed to be, you know, like. All that kind of stuff, it, it helps us feel good about ourselves. Yeah, man. I, you know what's crazy? I was just watching uh, this documentary on HBO, mm-hmm. and it was about um, uh, NFL athletes. I forgot who the second – Michael Strahan was one guy, and then there was somebody else. But they were talking about how there's literally nothing – that so many guys who retire from the NFL or, mm-hmm. and, or, or professional sports in general, but they, this was a focus on the NFL. So many guys that retire, man – they they struggle to find happiness and they find out years later that it goes back to there's no teamwork there's no team environment there's no team setting mm-hmm. and exactly like you said they were playing their they were doing their part they were playing their role yeah. to contribute to something greater than themselves yeah. amongst a group of teammates man and uh there again there's just something really rewarding about that yeah i mean that that whole it's it's self importance because like i i like if i'm not where i'm supposed to be i'm letting people down Right. But if I am where I'm supposed to be, like I, I, I played my part. Like the wall, the wall didn't come down because of me. Right. You know, I, I did the best I could for, for my people and stuff. Yeah. And that, uh, you don't really have that with stand up, you know, because yeah, you want if you're on a show, you want the whole show to be good. Like mm-hmm. that's all you want. Right. You know, you want the show to be good. Um, but like, and that's I kind of miss being in bands for that, you know, because. When you're in a band, you're all working together to create something. Yeah. You're creating something that wasn't there before, you know, and you need people to be on point. You know, you need you need your, your team member or your bandmates. You need everybody to be just as, as, just as on point as you are. Yeah. And that's a great feeling when it all comes together. And you're, you're, you guys are literally, I mean, it's, it's like you guys are literally making music with yeah. the band setting and see like, that's one thing about stand up is it, it is very on you, you know, it's very, it's, it's all a, on you. It's, it's a very <laughs> self-reflective thing, man. Cause yeah. you're like, man, you know, when you have a bad set, you're just like, fuck, like what could I have done better? Yeah. And even like, uh, I forgot who I was talking to. It was like, dude, when it's good. It still feels kind of shitty, you know, and when it's bad, it feels aw- like if you bomb, it's bad. Right. Yeah. But when it's gr- when stand up is great, when you have a great set, dude, that makes all the like the shit that you have to eat so worth it. You know what I mean? But it's uh, yeah, it is all on you in terms of stand up. But I, I don't know. There's something in there, too, because it's kind of like everything that makes your set, your jokes work. It, that's kind of like that. I, it's not a team thing, but mm-hmm. there's so many parts that go into having a successful or just a good set mm-hmm. that it's rewarding when you do. Yeah. I mean, that's what's, what's cool about like the loud pack, you know, like it's, it's a joke, not, not like uh, any, any, any uh, insult or nothing, but it's a joke crew, mm-hmm. you know, but it's a team thing, but yeah. really you're, you're still on your own. I mean, oh, y'all, yeah. y'all run as a crew, right? you know, y'all do shows, you got that show in, in, on Halloween at LOL. Yeah. You know, it's a loud pack show. It's all the loud pack boys and all that stuff doing their thing. And yeah, you're you're running as a crew, but still, I mean, like, you're still all alone on there, man. And yeah, it, it's fucking, it's rough, dude. But yeah, there's been nights like, and you have a bad show, you're just like, man, like, I don't want to do this anymore. I, I don't, maybe I can't do this anymore. Yeah, dude. And I don't know. That, that's that's a good point, man. Like how you know, loud pack is like a team, right? Mm-hmm. And it's kind of, it's the same thing. And I love how, you know, mentally, man, doing stand-up is very comparable to football. Mm. And like, even like this, at the height of comedy, if I go, hey, I'm headlining, how long, how long am I going to do? An hour, right? That's what's expected of me. How long is a football game? 
It's sixty minutes. Yeah, literally, it it's such a like a it's such a fun way for me to kind of stay engaged. You mm-hmm. know, going from that football background to this, mm-hmm. but with like the loud pack, man. When we've done shows. It's cool because like, you know, maybe, you know, one person doesn't have a great set, but then the next guy comes and picks him up and there is that sense of like teamwork, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's, uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, stand up in, in in that regard when we do a show or, I mean, anytime we're on a show, like we did that show on Saturday, man. And you look at the lineup and it's like, oh, okay. Like if one person dips down, the next person picks up. And then in that sense, and there is a sense of camaraderie amongst comedians, you know, Mm -hmm. it's like, man, I wish I was doing that gig or this gig. But at the end of the day, there is camaraderie amongst comedians because we're all working to be funny. You know what I'm saying, man? Even at open mics, man, like at open mics, Especially for the audience, I want them to have a good experience, even if it is just an open mic. You know, yeah. uh, there's some people that that see it as a competition, like, oh, I'm I'm definitely gonna do better than this guy or yeah. this girl or whatever. You know, I'm just like, man, like we should just focus on having a good show for whoever's out there, for the two people, the four people, the the one person that's not on the list. Yeah, that's all. Like, let's make sure they have a good time. Yeah, you know. Uh, so it's never really a competition. Even when I've done competitions, I was like, man, I just want everybody to have a good time. Yeah. You know, if they're having a good time, then we're going to have a good time on stage. And then like, let's let, let the judges decide like yeah. who did what, you know, who didn't, you know, whatever. Uh, so I really don't, I don't, I don't really care for competitions as, as in comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, probably cause I'm not really that, that, uh, confident in, in my stuff yet. But I mean, like, it would be great to win a competition. Yeah. Oh, you mean like literally, like, like a, doing a competition where there's like, you yeah, know, they're they're gonna declare a winner at the end. Yeah. See, I haven't done that yet. Like, so is it just that? Like, what is it about it you don't like? Because I'm interested in doing it, but I I'm still I'm there too. Where I'm so early in my career, where it's just like I just I don't know. I just I don't have that confidence to go into a competition. Yeah. Um. I mean, like, th- with comedy that you still want, or I, I still look for uh, a team aspect, mm-hmm. a, a band, a group aspect of it, you know. Those competitions, I mean, like, they're, they're rough. And sometimes it's just for a little bit of money or maybe, like, a showcase they offer. Like, the, the one that I did was for Mind Twist Comedy, mm-hmm. you know. And I think the one who ran, who won from that was uh, Bubba Flores. Okay. He's a funny funny guy. He's been doing it for a while, but he's funny. I, I think he's out of Victoria. I'm not too sure about that. But, uh, uh, but yeah, so the one that I did, it was three rounds. It had 10 people in each round or something. And then three people from each round moved on to the finals. Was it five minute sets each round or what? Yeah. Five, okay. five yeah. minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I made it to the finals and I feel like I did pretty good. I mean, the crowd was kind of rough uh, at that place. Um, but for sure, like I, I, I was not disappointed. You know, I, I was not surprised that, that Bubba Flores won it. Yeah. You know, yeah, it would have been nice to win, you know, because once you win a competition, you know, like, uh, that's kind of like saying, hey, man, you're, you're doing really good. Yeah. You know, yeah, like yeah. people could give you like, oh, good set, bro, after your, after a show. But a competition, that's like, I, I won out of like, what, 30 people. Yeah. I know? mean, there is, I guess it would... Uh, it's kind of like you said, like if you go into something like with the whole, like how your production thing, right? Like, you know, you start this thing, you finish it. And if you can come on top mm-hmm. a winner, right. Mm-hmm. Especially in, in the comedy competition, you're just like, it gives you a sense of confidence, you mm-hmm. know, outside of self pride, just as a comedian, the next time you take the stage, you probably go on stage like, hell yeah, I just won this fucking contest. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, I remember uh, uh, comedians in cars, right? Like mm-hmm. watching an episode and Jerry Seinfeld was talking about how he goes, if you win a competition, that doesn't mean you're great for the rest of your career. It just means you were the best that night. That night, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so that kind of, I'm not saying that, you know, excuse me. I'm not saying that uh, winning a competition doesn't mean shit. Mm-hmm. But I think that a lot of people get caught up in like, oh, I won this. And now they kind of ride that for as long as they can. And then they kind of try and like reboot them so or you know what i mean yeah. like i don't know man but um but shit i'm talking from a perspective i haven't done a contest yet if i want a contest i'd be in here like it fucking matters dude yeah. you know what i mean like uh, i you mean know, whatever. The, yeah depending on what the contest is i know like a lot of people use it as a credit you know like austin whoever i forget what they call 
funniest person in Austin, FPIA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like that's a credit they announced. I'm like, this is 2018 winner of FPIA. You know, yeah. like, they're like, oh wow, that's that's impressive. You know, yeah. Um, so I mean, it, it it is something to to consider, and it could be something to to boost you up as far as like getting bookings and all that stuff. But I don't know, man. I, I'm I'm really just I want to have a good show for people because uh, people really don't come to comedy shows, you know. Uh, in San Antonio, yeah, yeah man, know, it's it's kind of hard to get a full house. Yeah, it's uh, you know, you kind of, and it's funny too because on those nights when like you get a decent crowd, mm-hmm. you're like, oh, oh, like people should be here and listening to my material and laughing. Like mm-hmm. I should, like you know, those open mics kind of. That's where you pay your dues. You kind of grind it out. You, you know, deal with that heckler or whatever, man. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I I feel like. Um, I know what you mean when you say like people out here, right, in San Antonio don't really come out to comedy shows. But from the time I've started up until now, I think there's there's been a good like incline mm-hmm. in attendance with shows or there's been a positive change with the crowds. Mm-hmm. Even on those nights where there's, you know, five motherfuckers in the crowd, whatever. Um it's almost like they're there to laugh at least. And then, you know, right now with, you know, guys, you know, a bunch of big comedians, Stan Hope was just at LOL, you yeah. know, Chappelle's in town. He added two shows. You know what I mean? I mean, I think that by those bigger name comics coming in, it kind of, you know, encourages people to go out and watch local comedy too, because. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know. I don't know if it, this has anything to do with the, the, the truth that we, that we had, uh, now, I mean, because you, like you said, Stan Hope was in town yeah. at LOL, and then Chappelle did his second show right. at Aztec. But uh, nobody went to the open mic at, at Elbow Room. Oh, really? Yeah. So I think Elbow Room is canceled. Like, Elbow Room is done. It's no longer a Tuesday mic. Yeah, I saw the, the late uh, Irma, who, like, runs it or whatever. Yeah. I, I saw that she was, uh, like, they don't want to do it anymore. Or, yeah, or man, whatever. It, it's, it's pretty sad. I mean, like, it, it was a rough room. It was a rough, rough audience. Yeah, I had been there twice, and, and the two times I went, it was rough. It was it was rough. I mean, the, the room, because it was always different people, too. Like, people just, just so happened to be there. They're like, oh, fuck, there's an open mic, and... So, so it was rough. I mean, I appreciate you know her efforts in trying to make it go, uh, make it happen. I mean, like I know she ran into some trouble with with the uh, the old management from from LOL, uh, which I don't think that's an issue anymore. But because uh, people would try to do both, you know, people want to do hit both mics, you know, because yeah. LOL could go kind of late, you know. Yeah. Man. So they're like, oh, let me just go pop up down the street or not down the street, but close by right. to try to do the elbow room, and then I'll come back. And some people were missing their spots at LOL, so. You know, management got upset. Management at that time got upset. You know, but right. but I I get because of Chappelle, and then with uh with uh, Stanhope. I mean, a lot of the comics want to see their people. You know, the the yeah. people that they like, the people that I mean, I would have loved to gone to Chappelle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> man, I feel bad. My my wife tried to get tickets on Monday. Like she left work and went to go stand in line. Oh. And uh, by the time she got there, like she got there. Cause she found out about it late, and she like, she's like, "I'm gonna leave work and go try go get tickets." I was like, "Yeah," <laughs> <laughs> but like she was, she said like by the time she got in line, like the 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 line was all the way down the block, all the way to Novato. Yeah, and like so she was in the back, and then she tried to jump on queue, and it said two thousand plus year in line, and I think the Aztec was like man, what, like fifteen hundred <laughs> or something like that. Dude, that's the same thing happened to me and my girl, dude. We were like, oh, all right, like let's just see what happens. I had like, you know, coworkers being like, hey, dude, Chappelle's in there. Like, are you gonna go? And I'm like, if I can get through this queue, then sure, you know, I'll be yeah. there. But yeah, dude, I mean, but shit and they but and he added two shows and they both sold out within like 15 minutes or some shit like that and what's funny too is my wife she's like you know they they had a show there on wednesday that got canceled she's like so i bet Chappelle's gonna add a couple more shows i was like yeah. probably not i mean he doesn't want to stay in san antonio longer than he has to <laughs> and then the next morning the Chappelle added two more two shows more, yeah. the 15th and 16th You're like fuck <laughs> Nah, but she's a sweetheart, man. Like she went and she felt really bad. I was like, don't don't feel bad. I mean, like it was yeah. like it was gonna sell out regardless. I mean, like I know like you try to do it, but she felt bad. She came home and she bought me tickets to Seinfeld. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah, so man. we're gonna get to see Seinfeld in December, man. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. she's awesome, man. Um, 
but yeah, so uh, so people went to LOL to see Stanhope. I wish I would would have gone. Yeah. But I mean, it was it was like out of my my price range for right now, and then didn't get tickets to Chappelle. But people who did get tickets to, to Chappelle, they're not gonna say, oh, but I gotta go hit up a mic. Right. Or same thing with Stanhope. Like oh, I I w- like there's a mic. Let me not see Stanhope. You know. Yeah. And then the attendance was, was kind of like dwindling anyway from from comics and from people who the patrons, I guess. Um, so I guess you just felt like it wasn't wasn't worth it to keep that going, which which is sad. But you know, like we're trying to start new mics, you know. Yeah, man. I I don't like. Where have you guys been like thinking about trying to start new stuff? Well, I haven't started one. I I help host the one at uh, uh, Luchador. The oh, L- that's right. Yeah, that's L- right, Mike. dude. That's a that's a cool. I I did it. Uh, how long has that one been running now? Like, I think just a month. Yeah, dude. But in the month that it started, man, like I went on the late night one time, and uh, there was people there, man, and they were like engaged, you know, because it's a bar, yeah. right? And sometimes those bar open mics are really rough to yeah. get people engaged, but people are there to like watch, man. And that's a really cool open mic, dude. Um, but I feel like there's a there's a core group of comics that are like really trying to work at it and like mm-hmm. really get better and they're trying to get like you know really good quality mics out you mm-hmm. know what I mean and uh, it's only going to help us comics and then it's only going to make the scene more enjoyable for people that come and watch too. Yeah, I mean you you have to do it like comedy is the only art form quote unquote that you need an audience to practice in front of. Yeah, like it's not like rock bands where you could practice guitar in your room and right then rehearse in a garage and then hit the stage like right you don't you can't you could talk to yourself in your car or you could talk to yourself <laughs> like in the shower and all that right. stuff but it's not you're not doing stand-up unless you get on stage at yeah. a mic and stuff so i mean we we need mics if we could hit like multiple mics uh a day yeah or for sure multiple mics a week yeah like that's us that's us working on our craft yeah quote man. unquote again um so so doing all that, and you know, you, you you if you have a show coming up, you hit mics, you you know, you do all your things and stuff, and then if you have a bad show, and a bad show, not a bad mic, but if you have a bad show, you're like, man, I wasted all that time <laughs> at these open mics, you know, yeah, like dude. I feel bad for my wife because she she doesn't see me as much as she would like, yeah. you know, and I'm like, but when you have a good show, I'm like. See, that's what I was working it's on this whole time. It's <laughs> all worth it, man. It's all worth it. Dude, you know what's funny? This is uh, the first, like, it, it didn't click for me, man, until, uh, like, quick quick story, dude. Like, I was doing open mics, right? And obviously, that's how you start, mm-hmm. you know? And I was doing open mics, and I was just like, fuck, man. Like, I'm doing open mics for eight on a good night, 30 people, right? Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, if LOL had a good turnout, you know, there's 60 people there, right? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, fuck you know, I'm starting out, I'm doing this and I'm trying to work on this material. And it, you know, I know this is a good part of a joke, blah, blah, blah. And it wasn't until I did my first actual show, I got a guest spot at a, at a show at LOL and mm. the place was fucking packed out, dude. It was, it was honestly a great first experience. And then I was like, Oh, this is why you do open mics. Mm-hmm. You do open mics to find the good, the strong points in your joke, throw the shit out that doesn't work. Yeah. And you're doing this, to perform in front of people who want to laugh, who want to watch comics. Mm-hmm. You're not doing it to stay an open micer, man. Yeah. And that was the first time I put it in perspective. Like, oh, that's why I need to keep going to these open mics, mm-hmm. dude. But yeah, I, I know what you mean. It's just uh those open mics, there's some there's some good stories that come from open mic nights. Yeah, too. man. Yeah, uh, even with the show, like like I recorded the, the show that I did on Saturday or that we did on Saturday. And uh, even listening back to the recording, I'm like, oh, I, I could have taken this out. I could add this part. Like, yeah. You know, like, like always, oh, you're always working, always yeah. writing. And that's fun, too. Yeah, it is fun. And it annoys my wife because she's like, I thought you, I thought you weren't doing open mics today. You're like, babe, is this funny? <laughs> no, but like, I'll, I'll be there like with my headphones on and stuff and just like listening to my stuff. She's like, how many times are you going to listen to it? Yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm just, I'm working, I'm writing and yeah. all that stuff. She's yeah, like, yeah. you said you weren't doing uh, open mic tonight. I was like, I'm not doing open mic. She's like, well, then get off your fucking phone yeah and you're like you don't get it <laughs> no nah, but don't understand i mean they, they, you have to be fair with it I'm, I'm trying my best to be balanced because i do go out almost every night yeah. and then wednesday night i do the podcast and all that stuff yeah so trying to be balanced trying to keep the balance and be fair with all that stuff but it, it's it's a it, you, you got to work at it yeah man. you have to work at you it. you do you do but uh, it's fun that's fun too that's a fun process not only 
just thinking, oh, this might be funny. But then like uh, when you figure out how to open up a joke or something like that, yeah. that's pretty cool too. But yeah, it does take, uh, it does take work. Dude. Cool, man. Uh, so you, you mentioned that you're going to be starting up your, are you, you have plans to start up your own podcast? Yeah. I mean, I know I've been talking your ear off when I see you and I'm like, Hey bro, uh, I've been thinking about doing my podcast and no, man, it, about it was great. I mean, that's honestly like talking to you and, and others, but mostly talking to you, like it gave me the idea like, Oh, well, like I could help other people do this stuff, you know? And that's yeah. that, the idea of starting the network. Um, and then the idea of, of offering my actual services, you know, recording and doing uh, pr- production work or producing work. Um, so, yeah, I mean, like whenever you ready to get started, if you need help, you know, I'm, I'm more than willing to help out and stuff. Uh, well, we could set something up. But uh, like what, what kind of what kind of idea are you thinking of running with? Yeah. So, I mean, right now. um I, it's going to be kind of broad, you know, broad podcast. It's not going to focus in on, hey, this is when you listen to this, this is what you're going to talk about. Uh, I enjoy talking to people, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I'm a people person, bro. So I want to talk to other artists, you know, comedians, musicians, painters, or, you know, authors, just, I just, you know, small business owners and exactly kind of how you want to do the X lives thing, man, is just, you know, really connect with people and uh, get their backstory. Mm-hmm. But one thing, you know, selfishly, right, is as a comedian where I find a lot of material is just in talking to people or mm-hmm. doing things, man. Mm-hmm. And so that's another thing. And it's a, it's also just another outlet to get people to listen, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and create your following. And people that want to hear what you have to say, you know, whether it's storytelling, whatever. So I think it's going to be, uh, you know, if I do a solo episode or whatever, it's going to be, you know, stories from my life, you mm-hmm. know. Um, and then, you know, other than that, it's going to be booking people that I can interview and kind of talk to them and mm-hmm. ask them, you know, about, you know, whatever field they're in. Ask them questions about, you know, how they got started, you know, what they love about it, what they hate, the ups and downs about it, how yeah. they make it. And uh, that's really my idea for the podcast. Um, and then I was talking to one of my buddies and he said, hey, man, you just he has a web show, you know, and he goes, hey, man, you just got to start. And he goes, the, mm-hmm. the sooner you start and the more consistent you are, the faster you'll you'll figure it out, you know. And he was like, you, you might start off with one idea and change it. But as of right now, my idea is just it's going to be, you know, when I'm doing it solo, it's going to be storytelling, you know. Mm-hmm. And then if I'm interviewing somebody, it's going to be about, hey inform us on what it is that you do you know what i mean just kind of you know give some give people perspective basically awesome man yeah let me know if i could help out with that definitely uh, but uh sure uh do it uh do your shows again your uh your plugs any shout outs anything you want to do uh let them know about it again right now yeah definitely man so again uh i'm primarily on instagram i wish i was better about being on like twitter and shit like that but yeah. I, I just i don't know instagram is the one i like you know uh, but yeah, so you guys, you know, you can get, follow me on Instagram at Joe Leg underscore SD. Shout out to San Diego, right? J O E L E G underscore SD. Uh, find me on Facebook at uh, Joseph Legretti. And then uh, again, man, I got some shows coming up. I'm really looking forward to these shows. I got a showcase tomorrow, uh, October 17th at LOL Comedy Club. Uh, and then I'll be up in Austin at the Lazy Days, uh, right off of Sixth Street. Actually, a cool little venue. That's pretty cool. I did that once before too. That's, That's uh, cool. Saturday, October nineteenth. And then uh, me and the Loud Pack Boys, Debo, Quasi, Dallas, Freddie, uh, Alvin Perry. Man, we're gonna be out there at the uh, LOL Comedy Club, October thirty first. You know, so tell them tricks, bring the treats. And <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's that loud black talking right there. <laughs> that's, that's the half black side coming out now. No, that's the half black side. But no. Uh, so, yeah, I got some shows coming up, man. And um, I'm really excited, man. I really am. Cool, man. Uh, I myself don't have nothing coming up until November. November 3rd, I'll be at the Varsity Inn. Uh, that's in Seguin. Uh, you could probably catch me doing the midnight show at the Blind Tiger Comedy Club. Um so check that out you can uh, follow that at the blind tiger comedy on instagram uh anything else you could still find at the website the the babacoacore.com website uh so yeah this is the end of the babacoacore podcast the beginning of the x lives podcast uh but for sure the babacoacore podcast network will be something that i do keep going uh so yeah thank you very much for coming out man thanks for having me man seriously appreciate it laters